So IVF is used under a number of circumstances, certainly within a lesbian couple where one partner is donating and the other carrying. IVF is a very necessary part of this. Uh, but there's many other circumstances uh, where a woman uh, may need in vitro fertilization. Um, age is a big part of this, unfortunately. So women in their late 30s and early 40s may decide to move directly to IVF over simpler forms of conception just due to the efficiencies of IVF. Uh, individuals that may have blocked fallopian tubes uh, or a variety of other medical conditions that really make the success with things such as artificial insemination very low. In reciprocal IVF, where one partner is going to carry the pregnancy and the other partner is going to donate the eggs, it's very important that we evaluate both partners individually. For the woman donating the eggs, we want to make sure her egg quality has been appropriately assessed. Her general health is good. We want to do a genetic screen just to make sure that we can avoid passing any genetic diseases to the offspring. For the woman carrying the pregnancy, it's very uh, important that her health be in good condition, her health exams be updated, that we do a good uterine evaluation so that when we transfer an embryo to her, she has the best chance of having a successful implantation and subsequent pregnancy. So with IVF, uh, the individual donating the eggs, uh, she will start medications on her menstrual cycle. The medications are there to stimulate the eggs to mature. She's on those for about 10 days before the egg retrieval. Her partner will start taking medications to stimulate the uterus to be receptive to having the embryos implant. Really much of what we're doing is to duplicate what happens in nature, but in a very coordinated fashion. The egg retrieval is very straightforward, a safe process. It's a little bit scary because it's something that people are not familiar with, but it should not be feared. Uh, it's done in a surgery center. The uh, woman undergoing the egg retrieval, uh, she has IV anesthetic, so her health is protected. From there, the eggs go into the IVF laboratory. Fertilization occurs either by mixing the sperm and eggs together. Often we'll inject sperm directly into the egg to help ensure fertilization. The embryos are typically cultured anywhere from three to five days. And then uh, the partner carrying the pregnancy will come in and have the uh, embryo transfer. The embryo transfer itself is very simple and straightforward. The discomfort of it should not be anything more than just having a simple pap smear. Uh, we encourage both partners to be there during the transfer. Uh, we take a very small catheter and gently put a small number of embryos into the uterus. One very big question is, is how many embryos do we transfer? And ideally, if you're working with a good laboratory, a good center, you're going to have high quality embryos. And we want to take a very responsible approach to an embryo transfer. My general recommendation is to transfer as many embryos as you're willing to carry pregnancies or fetuses. If this is about having one child, transfer a single embryo. You can always take the excess embryos and freeze them. With the new freezing techniques, they do very well. I'd say one of the most exciting advances in uh, the IVF laboratory is our ability to genetically screen embryos. There's pre-implantation genetic screening, which is looking at the number of chromosomes present in an individual embryo. Uh, we'll take a single cell from each embryo. If I have a healthy embryo, it should not jeopardize that embryo and we look at all the chromosomes inside. So we can pick up things like Down syndrome, we can pick up the gender of the embryo. Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is a little bit different. The removal of the cell occurs the same way, but we can look for individual uh, diseases within that embryo. So a couple that might have cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, there's literally hundreds of diseases that we can test for within that embryo. And the idea is, is for us to be able to select the best, healthiest embryos for transfer. So the embryo transfer to me is one of the most exciting days in this process. Uh, it's a day where uh, everybody comes together, we'll review the embryos, how the embryos are growing, uh, the couple will get a picture of the embryos, we'll decide which embryos and a number of embryos to transfer on that day. The partner will be in the room with the embryo transfer. 
We use an ultrasound uh, to guide the catheter with the embryo into the uterus. And it's something that the partners will watch together. So it's actually a very loving moment for everybody in that room. Uh, we'll watch the release of the embryos. Uh, overall, it's, it's just, it's, it's kind of a magical day and a very special moment uh, through this process. It takes it from a very clinical to uh, a process that's very special.